Today, we're going to spend the first two segments talking about the staff changes from last week when I was on the COVID list. And then we'll wrap up by talking about Sunday's game, Sunday's women's basketball game, between the Florida Gators and number 13 Georgia Bulldogs, only here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen wherever you listen to the podcast. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Sonos. Experience the game like never before with Sonos Arc, the premium smart soundbar for TV, movies, music, gaming, whatever you want, and more. Visit Sonos.com to learn more. Happy Tuesday. I am Brandon Olson. You can find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. I'm also the founder of WholeLineTorts.com, where you can find all of my written work. Getting right into it, we're going to talk about coaching updates from, again, I was gone from pretty much last Tuesday until yesterday, so a lot's happened. <laughs> so we're going to look at some uh, staff updates. I want to say coaching, but staff updates because it supports staff and all that stuff. And uh, it's including people that arrived, people that left, and people that were rumored here but didn't go, specifically talking about Tosh Lupoy. Uh, he was, of course, the defensive line coach for the Jacksonville Jaguars this past year. He joined Urban Meyer and his staff. He is going to Oregon to be the defensive coordinator under Dan Landing, who, I mean, I know that the rumor was, hey, maybe Tosh Lupoy comes to Florida to be the defense, the co-defensive coordinator with Patrick Tony, as well as being a defensive line coach, but that didn't happen because he is now the sole defensive coordinator at the University of Oregon. He is working under Dan Lanning, who I'm assuming Dan Lanning will be calling the defensive plays and doing a lot of the game planning and, and uh, just background work there, as Dan Lanning is, of course, the current defensive coordinator for the University of Georgia Bulldogs, who are in the midst of, I'll, I'll say, I think the most dominant defensive season that I've ever seen, as much as I hate to admit it, as much as I hate them, uh, that, that that's the simple facts. So on the bright side, He's leaving. So, yeah, there's that. There's no more Dan Lighting in the SEC after the championship game. But Tosh Lupoy, who was rumored to come to Florida, is not coming to Florida. There were also rumors that the SEC might give him a hard time because he's had recruiting violations in the past with Tennessee. Um, and so he's just completely skipping over that and just going to the Pac-12. Makes sense. He's also a West Coast guy. So makes sense that he would want to go to Oregon instead of Florida. And then also Shane Graham is gone from the University of Florida. He's a special teams quality control coach. You may remember him as an NFL kicker because he was an NFL kicker from 2000 to 2015, including, I believe, an all-pro season with the Bengals in 2005, I want to say, though. I'm sorry. I know he had an all-pro season. Pretty sure it was with the Bengals. Pretty sure it was in 2005. He's also a Saints kicker, which is actually how I know him more because uh, – that's that I just I don't know why, but I just remember him as the Saints, even though I think he spent just one year there. But hey, when I think Shane Graham, I think Saints for some reason. He was at Florida for two years, special teams quality control coach that is no longer here. He is not being retained by Billy Napier, which isn't really surprising. Billy Napier has been kind of cleaning house. So that, that that's nothing shocking. Bree Wade is joining the Florida coaching staff, the director of on-campus recruiting and football events. She worked at Mississippi State, and then she was at Louisiana before coming to Gainesville. She was a student recruiting assistant for four years at Mississippi State before she became a recruiting assistant at Mississippi State, and then she moved on to Louisiana. So Billy Napier is bringing her along. And I, I mean, I'm excited for her to come by. I think she's great. I've, I've been seeing her on social media for a little while now. She does some great stuff, and I'm, I'm very excited to see how she works with the Florida Gators here. Matt Bergeron is the next name to talk about. He is an offensive analyst that is focusing on wide receivers, and Matt Bergeron, I mean, he he's filled a variety of roles at this point. You know, he hasn't been coaching for too long. I believe he started coaching in 2016. He played quarterback for college uh, from 2013 to 2016, and then he got into coaching after that. He's been the past four seasons at Louisiana, so he's obviously another guy that Billy Napier has experience with, trusts, and is bringing along from Louisiana to join the University of Florida Gators football staff. Uh, he will be an offensive analyst for wide receivers. I don't know if I specified wide receivers before, but an offensive analyst covering wide receivers. He was the GA for both quarterbacks and wide receivers at Louisiana, or well, 
he was a GA for quarterbacks in his first year at Louisiana and then wide receivers in his second year. And then he moves on to be an analyst for wide receivers in his third year and is and then an analyst for tight ends last year. And now he's joining Florida, focusing again on wide receivers. So he's one of those guys who he's still trying to find his footing, I guess, or he's still trying to find his niche role for a team. But uh, for now, it, it looks like wide receivers is what we're leaning towards because, you know, he's gone QB to wide receiver, wide receivers to tight end, back to receivers. So it looks like he's finding his footing at wide receiver or wide receivers analyst, at least. We'll see where he goes from there. And Paul Pasqualani is also, as the coaching staff, he, he, he is back. He is the director of advanced scouting and self-scout. Uh, he has been the special assistant to the head coach at Florida for the past two years, of course, working under Dan Mullen, one of the few people to actually remain at Florida after this whole coaching overhaul. I was going to say change, but coaching and coaching and staff overhaul, really. And I know that uh, I believe it was Jervon Dexter when this came out that Paul Pasqualani was coming on or moving to director of advanced scouting. I believe it was Jervon Dexter that was tweeting very publicly that he is excited for it and that he loves Paul Pasqualani, that, he, that he's that dude and he's excited that he gets to stay on the staff. So, you know, a, a, a lot of changes happening here. Uh, Billy Napier continues bringing in his people. I don't want to say his guys because, you know, he's bringing in women. So he's bringing in his people. And I, it's great because, like, it, it's familiarity. But he's also bringing in some bigger names and some outside hires. That it, It's a good mix of people he's got experience with and people that he doesn't and can bring in new ideas because a lot of the people that Billy Napier is bringing in, they spent all or a lot of their early coaching careers with Billy Napier. So they've been working under him and learning under him for a few years now where when he's bringing in these outside voices, it's not really just a vacuum where it's Billy Napier, Billy Napier's principles wrapped up with all these people that have learned under Billy Napier as I don't want to say a mentor, but have learned under him as their leader. Um, so it's not really a vacuum here. He's getting outside ideas as well. He's getting outside talent as well. And he's he's, he's looking to compete in every every aspect of football. And I mean, you, you'll see when we talk about nutrition in the next segment that we're really talking about competing in every possible aspect here. Hey, Gators fans, I'm here with an incredible app for everyone who buys gas that needs to know about Get Upside. My listeners are making up to 25 cents for every gallon of gas every time that they fill up. Download the free Get Upset app in the App Store or Google Play right now. Use the promo code SCORE and get a, a bonus 25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. So your first fill up will be 50 cents per gallon. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using GetUpside. Just download the app for free and use promo code SCORE to get up to 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot are making as much as two to $300 per month back, and there's no catch. The cash app gets added right to your account. You can cash out anytime with your bank account, PayPal, and e-gift card for Amazon and the other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app or use promo code SCORE to get up to 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. That's code SCORE. I mean, you use it when you got to fill up, you know. Just keep using your car to let things right, right, a little bit past a little bit past the, and then fill it up and maximize your earnings that way. Just maximize your cash back. That's all I'm saying. That's code SCORE, S-C-O-R-E. Anybody else make money this past weekend? Because I know I did actually bowl, bowl week or this past bowl weekend was uh, pretty kind to me. The New Year's Six Bowls were uh, pretty kind to me. That was pretty great. Uh, bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. Obviously, Florida wasn't super helpful or helpful in any way, shape, or form. Definitely a net loss on the year for me for Florida. Thanks, buddies. Um, but bet online even throws award shows. TV shows, and reality TV and politics. You can bet on the Brazilian election for 2022 if you want. With real-time updated odds and props on almost anything you can imagine, it is the best way to place your bets, and it's 100% free to sign up. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Make sure to use promo code Locked On. That's L-O-C-K-E-D, no space, O-N. Now we're going to continue talking about some of the uh, the staff changes and staff updates that have been 
happening. And we're talking about things that are done. I'm not talking about rumors in this episode. We're talking about solidified done. So first up, we've got Kelsey Gomes, the director of sports nutrition. She's someone that a lot of people are very excited for because she finally gets to focus on one thing. She's been uh, working within sports nutrition for North Carolina and multiple sports. Like she's been, she was spread very thin when she was at North Carolina. So she gets to work solely with football, at least early on here. Who knows if she does very well, then maybe Florida's like, Hey, can you do this sport? Can you do this sport? Maybe that'll happen, but I don't think it will, but I'm very excited for it too. Cause sports nutrition is great here. When you're looking at this Florida Gators team where there's a lot of guys on this team and like football players, big dudes, <laughs> big, big dudes. You work on their sports nutrition and th- th- that's going to be great for them. She is a registered dietitian as well. So that's awesome. She's been a part of, I believe, three championship teams at North Carolina. But again, now she gets to focus on Florida where, hey, maybe she'll be a part of three championship teams with the Florida Gators football team. I don't know. Maybe hopefully. Hopefully, but uh, you know, when you look at these kids, it's like these kids come out of high school. You can look at the pictures of strength and conditioning coaches and staffs put out of players who they show up and they're, let's say my size, you know, <laughs> let's say they show up and they're my size. They're 5'11 and they're 180 now. Yikes. Uh, they're 5'11, they're 180. And then a, a couple of years later, they're still 5'11, but they're 235 and they're yoked out of their minds. So sports nutrition, it's it's something that often gets overlooked, but you're working with these people and molding their bodies, strength, conditioning. Now you're putting in their dietitian as well. And it's going to make this, he, this team just grow so much better. CJ Wolford is coming in, the defensive quality control coach. He spent 2019 and 2020 with Louisiana under Billy Napier as a defensive backs quality control assistant. And then he spent 2021 as a grad assistant coach for safeties and nickels, which is awesome because, I mean, you look at this defense and the nickel is a big thing because it's, uh, you could look at guys like Trevor Johnson and Chauncey Gardner Johnson, where it's, you know, are they a corner? Are they a safety? I don't know. They just play nickel. So you have someone who focuses on the nickel position. CJ Wilford, of course, is just focusing on the defensive quality control coach overall, which is a promotion, by the way, because again, he was a GA coach and, or GA and he was a DB quality control assistant. But here, he is just all defense, so it's going to be big. Again, we're looking at the uh, analyst position and the quality control a lot with this team. So we got C.J. Wilford joining on. Braxton Morris is another name that's coming on as a quality control coach of the defense. Again, defense as a whole, not a specific group. So, again, just so many assistants, off-field roles, on-field roles, just so many things happening with this coaching staff. Braxton Morris, he was he held the same role for Louisiana in 2020 and in 2021 under Billy Napier. That is an awesome DM I just got, by the way. You guys are going to like that. I'm not going to say it until it happens, but that is an awesome DM that I just got. I, I hope we can make it happen like this week. Um, but Braxton Morris, he held the same role as a quality control coach of the defense for Louisiana in 2020 and 2021 under Billy Napier. And he is coming to Florida to hold that same role, obviously. And the last name to talk about for the coaching updates or the staff updates, Kiwan Ratliff. Um, I'm not super stoked about this one. I was a fan of him, but not being retained by Billy Napier. Again, he is another one of the many, many names that is not coming over from the previous, uh, regime with the Florida Gators, but K1 Ratliff is not coming along. He was the assistant director of player personnel for the Florida Gators. He joined the Gators in 2019 in an off-field role as a secondary assistant and a recruiting assistant, or he helped with recruiting as a recruiter, whatever you want to call him, he was recruiting. Um, K1 Ratliff, of course, he played for the Florida Gators from 2000 to 2003 before becoming a second round pick in the NFL. And he went on to have an eight year NFL career from 2004, 2011, including the 2007 season, uh, which I'm singling out, not because it was a stellar season from him, but because I know regionally, a lot of the listeners of this show are Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans. Shout out locked on uh, Buccaneers. I love them. But um, with the Bucks. He spent 2007. K1 Ratliff was with the Bucks in 2007. So for you Bucks fans, there you go. You might remember him for that. But uh, I mean, it, it's again one of those things where 
the old regime just wasn't doing things right. They that's I believe a pretty simple and undeniable fact that you have there. Uh, Kevin Ratliff was the assistant director of player personnel, which I'm not blaming him for anything, but the the whole regime pretty much left except for a couple of people. So Billy Napier, he's cleaning house. He's bringing in his staff and his assistants and his support staff and his whatever you want to call them. He's bringing them in. He's developing them. He's building this Florida Gators program from the ground, really from the ground. This is one of the worst Florida Gator football teams that I've ever seen, despite record. I don't care about record. I know that record-wise, we've seen bad things. That was just a horrid season. So he's building them from pretty much the ground up. There are bright spots, of course, but you know that things need to change. And I understand Billy Napier getting rid of a whole bunch of people, despite how much we might not like certain decisions being made. I'm not on the coaching staff. And as much as I like to think I'm smart and know more than other people, um, I don't know more than a guy that's a head coach of a Power 5 SEC program. So I'm going to let him do his thing, despite my feelings of it. This is it, the putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the championship is yours. But on your backswing, your ha- I don't, again, I don't, this is a baseball stance to me. I don't, I don't do golf, sorry. Um, your hat falls right over your eyes. Is this how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software like a boomer. To see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth with NetSuite. You can automate your processes and close your books in no time while staying well ahead of your competition. Over 28, notice the difference, over 28,000 businesses already use NetSuite for the new year. NetSuite has a new financing program for those who are ready to upgrade at netsuite.com slash locked, L-O-C-K-E-D, that's it. Head to netsuite.com slash locked for this special one-of-a-kind financing offer on the number one financial system for growing businesses. That is netsuite.com slash locked, again, just L-O-C-K-E-D, and that's it. That's all you got to do, netsuite.com slash locked. To wrap up today's show, we are talking about the women's basketball game on Sunday against the Georgia Bulldogs. Of course, they played on Sunday afternoon against the number 13 Georgia Bulldogs. The Gators started strong, like, and I mean started strong. Like, they killed it in the first quarter. They were dominating at the end of the first quarter, 25-14. to 14. Unfortunately for the Florida Gators, that was the best quarter by a long shot. Um, it was the only quarter that they would win in that game, they lost two quarters and tied another. In the second quarter, the Georgia Bulldogs bounced right back by winning that quarter 19 to 9. So the Florida Gators were only up by one going into halftime. And then at the start or at the end of the third quarter, it was still Gators up by one because they tied by six, they tied 16-16 in that third quarter. And then in the fourth quarter, Georgia Bulldogs outscored the Florida Gators 24-19 to win by four. The final score of 73. 269, which really sucked. Um, it, it, it's just it's one of those things where the Florida Gators women's basketball team is left constantly trying to find their footing again, screwing around with the lineups, who's who's starting, who's coming in, who's not playing at all, who's rotating in and playing a lot of time. Uh, Nina Rickards played her best game of the season. She had 15 points on six of nine shooting with three rebounds and one steal. Jordan Merritt and Kiki Smith. I I know that I speak about Jordan Merritt, Kiki Smith, Lavender Briggs, and Nina Rickards a lot. Uh, Jordan Merritt and Kiki Smith got back to being the stars that they were at, I mean, for the huge majority of the start of the season, they kind of tapered off before that little Christmas break that they had. Um, Jordan Merritt and Kiki Smith got back into the star column. They combined for 35 points on 11 of 23 shooting, including nine for 12 from the free throw line. That is easily like the most thank goodness thing because, uh, you know, free throw or foul shooting in general in college men and women is just atrocious. So to go nine for 12 is great to get to the line that often and convert. They also combined for 13 rebounds. Hear me out. Six assists. Hear me out. And seven steals. That was just pure dominance in that in that respect. Just absolutely balled out on the defensive side and on the offensive side. Jordan Merritt and Kiki Smith, both sides of the ball. And if you want to include the third facet of rebounding, but I tend to include offensive rebound defense in their own respective uh, fields. Um, Jordan Merritt and Kiki Smith, 
dominant throughout. She's absolutely dominant. Lavender Briggs, who's usually the third star that I talk about, she had a rough game. You know, she went three for 11 from the field with just seven points off the bench. Alberta Rimdahl and Faith Duke. I, I, I single out those two women. You know why? Because you look at Alberta Rimdahl and Faith Duke, they were the only bench players to score in that game. That, I'm not saying the score as much or whatever. They were the only ones to score. They each had six points. Alberta Rimdahl shot two for seven, while Faith Duke shot two for two, combined four for nine shooting. Um, it, it was rough because <laughs> I feel like every time I say something, the opposite happens because I spent time, you know, after the Florida State game, I was like, look, the starters didn't play well, but thank goodness the bench came in and cleaned house. And it was a bit of a bench mob effect. And it was so great and so cool from them. And then now I'm talking about this and I'm like, look, the starters, they showed up. They showed up. Cause you look at Nina Rickards, Jordan Merritt and Kiki Smith, and they combined for 50 of the 69 points that the Florida Gators scored in that game. So it's like, wow. Just like lo- looking at that, and you look at just how no one else really contributed. Uh, Floor Tunders didn't score. So she she started, but she didn't score. Faith Dude scored six. Albert Rendall scored six. And then you look at uh, Jordan, at um, Lavender Briggs, and she scored seven. And that's it. that that was it for scoring. So they, they, it's it's sad. And you go, oh, yeah, six people scored in this game. Um, it's just awful. But it, it, it's one of those things, again, where now I, I was talking about the bench being so good and the bench just didn't show up at all. I, I think we need to see Lavender Briggs or Jordan Merritt come off the bench every single time. Probably Jordan Merritt. But I think we need to see one of them come off the bench every single time. I, I get having them all in the starting lineup and having them all on the court at the same time. Maybe that's what helped Nina Rickards open up and put up more points and have her best game of the season. But when you have your best players on the court – and it's those four, really. But we'll talk about the three that I usually talk about of Jordan Merritt, Kiki Smith, and Lavender Briggs. I don't think that you can justify putting Kiki Smith on the bench. I just think she does too much as a rebounder, passer, defender, because she had five steals, and a scorer. So I think she's too good to put on the bench. Jordan Merritt and Lavender Briggs, they're not similar in the sense of play style-wise necessarily, but they're both primarily scorers more than anything else. So I think having one of them come off the bench gives you that James Harden kind of vibe that the Oklahoma City Thunder used to use where you have great starters, you have your starters that you're comfortable with, and then you have a starter caliber scorer coming off the bench, and that makes your bench that much more lethal and that much more threatening. And I think we see either Briggs or Merritt move to the bench again. I think we're going to keep seeing Coach Finley screw around with these lineups, not not screw around in a negative sense, but just keep toying around with these lineups, keep building them and trying to figure out what really fits right. Because this was a close game against a very good team where only six players scored and only three really, really showed up. So I I think that, yes, this game's a loss and it starts SEC play 0-1 and and that sucks. But you look at this team and you look at how they've done and what they've done and you look at that game on Sunday against the Georgia Bulldogs and you go, okay, yeah, it sucked. To, it's it sucked to lose that game, especially so close, especially when you look at the team and you go, look, like the bench didn't show up. Like the bench didn't show up. Lavender Briggs had a rough night. If she was just a little more efficient, maybe it's different. But I think it's also encouraging to say they had such a down night. The mo- Most of the team had such a down night, and they only lost to number 13, I believe now number 12, Georgia Bulldogs by four points. And I, I think that's a little bit encouraging. I, I trust Coach Finley to figure it out. The Gators take on Ole Miss this Thursday after starting SEC play 0-1. And, and hopefully they will get to 500 in SEC play and get the new year fixed and get the course corrected. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't miss out tomorrow as we'll probably talk more about this football team, probably look at the basketball team a little bit. Now make your second listen, Locked On Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all of your gambling needs. Locked On Bets, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. For Locked On Gators, I am Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. You can also find all of my written work with Whole Nine Sports. That is W-H-O-L-E-N-I-N-E Sports. And I will see you all tomorrow.